Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1512. Hey, in this video, we want to see how to count workers employed one to six years based on the hire date. And we're going to see eight examples. This is one of the formulas we'll get to see. And we'll get to see both formulas and conditional formatting. Now, if we go over to the sheet 1512, we need a single cell formula that will count. And we're going to do a couple different examples. Here's our data set. And each employee has a hire date. Now, this hire date is not in years. So if our formula criteria is given to us as years, meaning we have between 1 and 6 years, we're actually going to have to convert those to dates. Then we can compare each date. Hey, date, are you between the lower and upper limit date to be included as an employee that's worked one to six years? Now, we'll do our formula down here. But first, we want our formula to be dynamic. So if I open this up tomorrow or the next day, it will accurately tell me based on today's date. So that means the first part of the solution is to use the today function. Now, the today function is an argumentless function. We simply enter it and hit Enter. I'm filming this on 8-10-2018. But when I open this tomorrow, it will say 8-11 and so on. Now, that's the starting point. Now we need to jump back six years and jump back one year to get our lower limit and upper limit. Now, the perfect function for that is equals E date. The start date, that's going to be today, because we need to jump back. Now I'm going to lock that with the F4 key, because I'm going to copy that E date formula over from the lower limit to the upper limit cell, comma. Now E date requires the unit months. And we're given years? No problem. I'm going to select that as a relative cell reference. That'll give me six years. So I simply multiply by 12. Now. E date, if I close parentheses right now, months is a positive number. So if I enter it, it jumps six years into the future. F2, I need it as a negative to jump back six years. So Control Enter, and there's my date. That's the first possible date between a lower and upper that qualifies you for the category one to six years. When I copy it to the side, there it is, 8-10-2017. That is one year back. Now, depending on the contract, we might subtract or add a date here. But we're going to assume that these dates are fine for six to one years back. Now our formula down here, well, we can use the COUNTIFS function. COUNTIFS is perfect for counting with conditions or criteria. Now our higher date column, I'm going to select that, comma. The first condition, because we actually have to ask two questions of that column. Our first condition is, in double quotes, you have to say greater than or equal to. Now, greater than or equal to has to be two different symbols. And because we're using count ifs, you have to put it in double quotes. Then we need to attach the comparative operator to the date right there. So to join things, we use ampersand. Shift 7, and then I select that cell. So together, that condition will ask of every single date, are you greater than or equal to the lower limit, comma, criteria range 2. We actually have to highlight the same higher date column again, comma. And now for criteria 2, this is the upper limit. So it's less than or equal to, in double quotes, we join it to the upper limit. Now we can close parentheses and Enter. There's our count of four. Employees like Shanika will not be included in the count because that date is further back than six years. Viviana is not included either because her hire date is not at least one year back. Now there are other ways we could have accomplished this. Now, I've hidden a column here, so I'm going to highlight D and F, and then right click Unhide. And we could use the AND function, because F2, COUNTIFs, and SUMIFs, and similar functions, they run an AND logical test. That means both tests had to be met. But it counts all in a single cell. 
Well, we could actually get a true or false for each one of the employee's records using the AND function. Logical test, well, I have to ask of each date relative cell reference as I copy down. And watch this. When we do a direct logical formula, we do not type double quotes. We say, hey, date, are you greater than or equal to the lower limit? Now I'm going to lock that with the F4 key. That logical comes out true or false, comma. Now we ask of the same date, are you less than or equal to the upper limit? F4 to lock it. So when we do logical formulas, we do not use double quotes. It's only when we use countifs, sumifs, and those type of functions that we actually have to put the comparative operator in double quotes. Now what happens with AND is it's only when it gets a true and a true that the AND function will deliver a true to the cell. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And Viviana, of course, has a false, as does Shanika. Now if we have this column here, there's two cool things we can do. We can actually use almost this exact formula to apply conditional formatting. That means we highlight the whole row when that employee has worked one to six years. Or we can use the result of this column in a formula. Now I'd like to count all of the trues. So we can use count ifs, and I'm going to look at the whole range with trues and falses, comma. And we type true. Now it will count only when it finds a true. When I hit Enter, a count of four. Now if we wanted to simply add, well, you can't do sum or sum product or any of these functions, because guess what? Almost all of the aggregate functions are programmed to ignore logical values like this. So if I try to add those and hit Enter, I get 0. If, F2, I wanted to convert that range or array of values to 1s and zeros, I could do any math operation. I'm going to do double negative, which oftentimes is the fastest calculating math operation when you want to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. If I select the number argument and hit the evaluation key F9, look at that. Now I have ones and zeros. Control Z. Now hopefully some will add that. Well, unfortunately, F2, we did an array operation there. That means we did some math operation or calculation on not a single cell, but a range or array of cells. So instead of using sum, I'm going to use the sum product function. Anytime you have a simple array calculation, which we do, and you want to just add it, we can use sum product because sum product is programmed to understand array calculations perfectly. Now, normally, you use sum product to put multiple arrays, and sum product will first multiply, that's the product part, and then add the result. We're kind of cheating. We're just using the function just to add our result, because we know it has no problem with array calculations. So when I hit Enter, it'll totally add that column. Now, let's do conditional formatting, and then we'll do our final uh, single cell formula in just a second. If I hit the F2 key, I want to copy this. I'm copying this in Edit Mode, Control-C, Escape. And what we need to do for conditional formatting is we want to highlight the range, then go up to Home, Conditional Formatting. And we're going to try and find a built-in method to do this, but there is none. So eventually, we're going to have to go down to New Rule and actually paste that formula into the dialog box. But before we do that, Notice I've highlighted the range. I'm going to come down here and pretend like the formula I just copied from here, F2, Control V, is in the dialog box. And I'm going to see what happens when I copy it to the side and down. Will it give me the right pattern of trues and falses for the conditional formatting to be applied? But the formula as we had it up here will not work when we're copying it across the columns and down. But with a slight change, we can fix it. Instead of locking this in all directions with two dollar signs, I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times. 
the dollar sign is in front of the B. So when I copy it to the side, it'll be locked on the higher date. But when I copy down, there's no dollar sign in front of the 8. So the blue one will move down to the next date. And if we do the same thing for this, F4, one, two, three times. Now we can Control Enter, copy it to the side, and copy it down. And there's our patterns of trues and falses. Every cell that gets a true will get our formatting. Every cell that gets a false will not get the formatting. Now I'm going to copy this formula from the upper left-hand corner, F2. And in edit mode, I'm going to highlight Control-C, Escape. Now I highlight the correct range. I copied from the upper left-hand corner, so I'm going to highlight with the active cell in the upper left-hand corner. Home, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format. Format values where this formula is true, Control V. Now I can go to Format and do whatever formatting I want. I'm going to do Fill Yellow. Click OK. And there we have it. Now someone entered Sylvie's higher date incorrectly. It shouldn't be 8-11-2017. If I change it to 10, instantly that whole row is formatted. We get a true here, and our count is 5. Now, a lot of times in payroll, which is where something like this will be used, we don't want to have all these extra cells around. I probably want to leave these cells as the only formula inputs. But the rest of these, we could actually mash them all together into a single formula. Now watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to come up to the top formula, F2, to put it in edit mode. Copy it in edit mode, Control-C, Escape. Come down here and Control V. Come up to today, F2. Copy that, Control C, Escape. Come down to the lower limit, F2. Notice that blue one is pointing up there. So I can double click that and Control V. Make sure you don't have your equal sign there. Now I'm totally going to cheat here. I'm going to copy this only in edit mode. So I'm copying this. Now when I escape, it'll revert back to that formula that was there before. But I cheated. I just used that edit mode for a second to copy. Escape. Now I come down here, F2. And notice H8 is pointing there. So now I Control V. So far looking good. I'm going to do the same thing here just because I don't like typing. Copy and edit mode, escape, F2. Double click, Start Date, Control V. Remember, I'm just altering this in Edit Mode. Control C, when I escape, it reverts back. But now I have what I want, F2. I come over to I8. It's pointing right there, Control V. I can pull my screen tip down, and that will do it. Now if I were to remove all of this, well, none of those work, but that one works perfectly. So now if you need a solution for your payroll and you wanted only these two inputs, there you go. Now I'm going to Control Z and leave it all as a trail. All right, that was a lot of fun trying to figure out from higher date how many employees work between six and one year. We saw a number of intermediate formulas. We saw a number of different ways to count. And we even saw one complete formula and conditional formatting. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. And be sure to hit that bell icon. A lot of us at YouTube have been annoyed because YouTube no longer sends us a message unless when we subscribe, we hit that bell icon. All right, we'll see you next video.